use your own command. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is, it is. I know it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, okay. So I sure don't need this anymore. All right, so I'm going to look at inverse now. Don't need all these windows open either. Okay, so, can we see okay, um, do you want to move that bit to the yeah, left, yeah. Tekken? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, whoa, 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 oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, nice, um, maybe a little more to the left, just a little, yeah, satisfying, mmm, me gusta, right, um, Inverse functions. What does the word inverse mean here? What do we mean by inverse? We'll say inverse of something. Mm -hmm. Like reverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have this idea that uh, if you have a function f of x, let's say for example it's 2x, so uh, what would be f of 4? It would become 8, right? We want to find a function that would let you go backwards. That is, if you calculate uh, the 8, your answer should be 4. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what function would let you go backwards? 8. No. <laughs> X divided uh, 2. Yeah? So like for example, mm -hmm. if I calculate um, F of 4 using this formula, what will I get as my answer? Eight. It'll be 8. And if I calculate f inverse, that's the name of this function, of 8, using this form, then what do I get? Four. 4. So this symbol here with the little minus 1, we call that the inverse function. It's the function you need to do the reverse of the f. Uh, reverse. Reverse slash. So can I as a function? Yes. So you'll be given a function, and you want to find the inverse function, the function that will let you go backwards. Okay. Okay. So sometimes it's easy. Like for example, if I said the function is x uh, cubed, what is the inverse function? Mm -hmm. What is the function that will undo this cubing action? Cube root in. Cube root Yeah. So sometimes it's pretty obvious what the inverse function is. And sometimes it's not. Okay, can I go down? How can we find the inverse function when it's a little bit more difficult? So for example, suppose I have a function like this. Suppose I have a function where you take x uh, multiply by 2 plus 4 and then divide it by 3. So what would, for example, f of, oh, I don't know, let's say um, 4, 8, f of 4. What would that be? Calculate that, please. Four. In this case, it would be 4. Okay, and what about f of 0, for example? 4 to 3. And so on. So what's the inverse function here? Well, it's not as obvious. What do you think? 3x minus 4 over 2. 3x minus 4 over 2. 2. 2. Now, uh, one way you can find it is by using these kind of set diagrams. So, for example, if you think about the x as your starting point, what's the first thing you do to x? Multiply you multiply it by 2. So it becomes 2x. And then what's the next thing you do to the x? Add four. You add 4 to it. Yeah. And then what's the last thing you do to the x? Divide by 3. Yeah. You divide your answer Sorry, by 3. So you can kind of go backwards. So imagine you start with x. The last thing you did was divide in by 3. 
So in the inverse function, that is the first thing you do, but it's a reverse. So yeah, so what you do is you would multiply by 3. Here, what did we do? We added 4. So here, we minus 4. And here, the first thing we did was multiply by 2. Therefore, the last thing we should do, divide by 2. So this kind of bubble diagram can let you make the inverse function. So we need to check that it works. I'm claiming that the inverse function is 3x minus 4. So if I, and you too, if I calculate the inverse of 4 over 3, what answer should I get? It should bring me back to 0. Yeah? Because 0 became 4 over 3, so the inverse function should take 4 over 3 to 0. So let's calculate the inverse. It's 3 times 4 over 3 minus 4 over 2. 3 cancels 3. 4 minus 4? Zero. 0. So yes, we do get 0. So this is the inverse function. Yeah? Yes? Okay. Can we always find an inverse function? What do you think? Right, so I want you to try and do this one for me. F of x, and you can use the bubble diagrams. Uh, F of x equals x squared plus 1. tell you you were wrong. has an inverse. What about x cubed? Yeah. 
No, no. Well, kind of. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So x cubed by itself, what do you think? It does. But not all cubic functions uh, are one to one. Some of them uh, are uh, many to one. So it means the usual ones don't have an inverse. But before we go on to more complicated details, I want to show you a second way to find an inverse, which maybe some people, most people prefer to do. So we'll take something like um, fx equals 2e 3x plus 1. Plus 1? Yeah, it should be a plus 1. Right, so you can actually do it the way I showed you. It works just fine. Uh, what's the first thing you do here with the x? If you were doing the bubble diagram, what's the first thing? Log. Is there a log here? No. Times three. Times three. <coughs> Second? Plus one. Plus one. Yeah. Next? E. And finally? Multiplied by two. So if you were going backwards, what would be the first thing you do? Divide by two. And the next thing you do? And, uh, l log it. Yeah? And then the next thing you do is minus one, it. And the last thing you do is divide it by three. So that would be the inverse function. But some people don't like that. There is another way to do it. Um, so I'll do it the other way as well. Okay, to the J. I can see you typing there. I see you have some instant message opening. I see bubbles on the screen. You're chatting to someone. Hey, it's Kedja here. What did you think of Arrow last night? Wasn't it totally amazing? Oh yeah, best episode ever. Something like this? <laughs> Alright, can I jump you? He might be, he might be saying, oh, I'm in Stephen's class now. Totally lame. He's boring. Do you want to get coffee later? Sure. Frappuccinos all around. <laughs> this no. 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 <laughs> not like. like yeah. Similar. Not this. Just no frappuccino. The rest is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, I can show you the second way. Yeah. Is there something going on this evening? Is there a social outing or something? Or was that last week? The wax museum. Yeah, yeah, Did you go to it? No. No one here went to it. <laughs> I told Sylvia some of my engineers might go. <laughs> no. No. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright. So, uh, the I'll other... Go to Mark Lewis for the meeting, huh? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll try to arrange that then. I read what? I can show you what Mark Lewis has given to Yeah. Test right. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Test right. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't see that ever happening. <laughs> um, the other way to do it is you make this equal to y. It's the first step. You know this way. Yeah. yeah. And then you solve for x. Yeah. So we imagine we're solving for x. So we x. divide by two. And then what would be next? Log. You log it. And then <coughs> that will cancel that. So you have y over 2 equals 3x plus 1. Log. But yeah, sorry, I didn't write in yet. Log y over 2 equals 3x plus 1. Mm. Log y over 2 minus 1 divided by 3 equals x. The 
So step two is solving. And then step three, once you've solved it, your answer is this piece here. But um, the x is just replaced by <coughs> the y. Uh, the y is just replaced by an x. Now, um, I have this issue with the people who write the exam because we disagree on something. Uh, because I told them that it is perfectly fine to write this as the answer. That sorry, that should be an x there. That if you didn't change the uh, y to an x, if you kept your answer like this. See here? Yeah. But just make sure you wrote here f inverse of y. That's perfectly legitimate. Yeah. Here? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Like some people, they like to swap the x and the y at the start. So they would write x equals 2e, 3 log, y plus 1, and then solve this for y. Oh. Some people do that. But uh, or. Equivalently, you can just do the swapping at the end. So you see here, when we go from here to here, the last step is to swap x and y. So it gives you this as the answer. Now, what my point is, is if you didn't swap the x and y and wrote the answer like this with a y in it, with a y here instead of an x and an x, that's exactly the same. Like, there's no difference. Because, for example, if I tell you fx equals x squared, what does this function do? Uh, it squares a number. Yeah. It squares the input. What does this function do? And uh, this function? Yeah, so these are all the same function. The letter is not even important. It just, uh, the letter is used to define what the function does, but it doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't have any importance. So, I, I told my students they could write the answer like this if they didn't want if they don't want to bother swapping the x and the y at the end. And the people who write the exam said this is not acceptable, but it is. It's just they don't know that it is. This is the problem. So look, I'm telling you that you need to make the swap at the end, but you only need to make the swap because the examiner in the UK wants to see the swap. But I'm telling you now, mathematically. There's no need to, okay? Uh, right, so that's the second way to do it. No, 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 you can, anyway, anyone. I'm just showing you two different ways. Yeah, uh, this way is the way all the students do it. They prefer to do it like this, where they have to solve an equation. Yeah. That's how you learned it? That's how you learned it? It's the usual way. You and this thing I was saying the day before you said this is what you were talking about, was it? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, th have you seen the, have you done the, with the set notation before? Have you ever seen it done that way? With the diagrams. With the diagrams. You've seen it that way? Mm -hmm. You have seen it that no, way? Yeah. Okay. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, some things never change. <laughs> right. Now, earlier we were talking about when functions have an inverse and not, so we need to focus on that a bit more. So, <coughs> what we really, really need, our fun technically we need our function uh, needs to be 1 to 1 and onto. Now, do you remember what the definition is? For onto. Yeah, actually. Is equal to the domain. The domain. Uh, you have it half right. Yeah, the range needs to equal something. Yeah. So one, uh, that's onto. The range must equal all real numbers. Yeah. And uh, one to one. Well, one to one, do you remember, is if the x's are different then the y's should be different as well. Now, the onto condition, if it's not satisfied, it's easily satisfied. Let me show you. Can I go down? Yeah. Yeah. 
let me give you a very good example. So suppose I say fx equals e power x. Is this function one to one? Hello, anybody home? Yeah. Is this function one to one? It is. Yeah. Is it on to? Yeah. No. How oh, do you know that it's one to one? The graph. I know it's one to one because of the graph. Do you remember? Um, because it only meets once horizontally and it only meets once vertically is a one to one graph uh, function. Do you remember? Mm. So, um, uh, this makes it one, two, one. One, one. Anyway, uh, is it on to? We know it's one to one. Definitely one to one. Is it on to? Yes. No. no. Because, why not? You don't get all real numbers in the range, do you? Yeah. This takes a real number in the domain and then the codomain, which is all real numbers. But the range, does the range fill up this set? Mm, no. no, the range only fills up half of it about, so to speak. Uh, it only fills up the positive numbers. The range is just the positive numbers. So it's not onto because the range doesn't fill up all real numbers. You only get half of them, only the positives. Okay? But the way you fix that, and it's very, very easy to fix, is you just say f is a function that takes a real number and then it returns a positive number. Now it is onto. Because what you've done is it's almost a bit like cheating. What you've done is you've just said this function takes the real number and the codomain is the positive numbers. Like when you write it like this, you're specifying that um, the codomain is only all the positive numbers. So what I'm saying is if a function is not um, uh, onto because it doesn't fill up the codomain, all you have to do is change what the codomain is, which you're allowed to do actually because you're, you say what the domain is, you know, what values of x you're allowed to use. So likewise you can say what the space the function goes into. Um, this isn't really the, the, the part I want to focus on, it's the when it's not one to one is the problem one. This is really the problem one. Um, by the way, what is the inverse function here? Yeah. Now, can you use any number here? No. no, you can only use positive numbers and you can get a real number as the answer. So this log x, notice how the log x's domain, you see here, is the range of the previous function. Which makes sense if you think about it. The f goes from here into the range which is positive numbers. Mm -hmm. So the f inverse, the log x, should go from the positive numbers back. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this is the opposite of this is actually, uh, that's what it should be. Okay? Um, but now the more serious problem is, what if it's not one to one? So for example, if I said f uh, is a function that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers, and f of x is, let's make it a quadratic. Um, I don't know. Something like this. Is this function one to one? So, what I'll do, we'll make it a small question. So, the first one is is this function one to one? Um, is it on two? And then the second one is, well, we'll get to that first. So the first two, I'll give you a minute to try it. Is this one-to-one? -one? Now, if you're saying it's not one-to-one, -one, it's not. If you're saying it's not one-to-one, -one, you need to prove it. And the way you prove it's not one-to-one -one is you need to find two values of x that make the same y value. Once you've done that, the proof is finished. Yes? 
So I'll give you a moment to try that. What's wrong? No? Well, you look confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we all agree it's not one to one. We're agreed? Agreed. So you need to prove that it's not. So you could say it's because the shape of the quadratic, but it's much better if you can show with a number value. Clearly, it's not one to one. Have we done this, KJ? Oh my <laughs> goodness. This is a habit, mm. is it? It was back in high school. He's talking about function. Come <laughs> on, uh, I want you to show that it's one to one. So I need you to find two values of x yes, that are different. I need to get the, the turning point. That is one way to do it, yes, yes, for sure. KJ, are you trying to deny me? That's what Carrera asked me 30 seconds ago. <laughs> what? You can't say that to me. <laughs> okay. Have we got the A part done? Yeah. All right. So A part. Here's part A. Fx equals x squared plus, what did I say? 3x mm -hmm. plus 2. Is this one to one? No. It's not one to two one. Two. Why not? Because there's two values x can go to. Yeah, and what are those two values? Plus, uh, x can go minus 2, x can go minus 1. Yeah. The there's many answers here. So f of minus 1 equals 0, and f of minus 2 equals 0. Yeah. That's one example. Does anyone have a different one? So 1 and minus 1? Yeah. No? Did you find the turning point, Karar? Yeah, but I didn't take the okay. turning point. All right, so is that OK for A? Now for B, is this function onto? No. No. Uh, you don't get all the numbers. What numbers do you get now? So tell me what tell me what the range is, I think it's yeah, is it onto? So uh, it's not because uh, if you look at the range, it's not all the real numbers. So tell me now what the range is. I want you to get the range. And again, Karar, you could use a turning point to get the answer. That's one way to do it. From the graph. If you like, that's only one way to do it. Go on. I don't want to see you. No, no, tell me. I want to look at you. What did you get? The number is tough by x minus one. Tough by x minus one. That's not it. That's not it. Anyone else get the range? No. No? Can you get the turning point? Why not? Three, one, two. Karar, can you find the turning point? Yes. One minus one. That's the turning point? Yeah. Yeah. So what's the problem? Your turning point is you got one minus one. Okay. Yeah. So the graph looks like this, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. 
that's a shorter point. These are my, you still with me, right? <laughs> yeah? yeah. So the range is all the y values. So it'll be all these numbers from minus one up to infinity. That's the lowest point. Right? Well, what is the range? The range is all the y values. All the values you can get, all the answers, right? So that's one way to do it, but uh, I prefer to do it by completing the square. Have a look. You can say that this is, uh, and are you sure it's 1 minus 1 as well? I don't think that was right for the that's turning point. No, sorry, bad luck. I don't think that was the turning point, correct? Minus 3 is like 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The va the when you complete the square, you get x plus 3 over 2 squared. That would be 9 over 4, minus 1 over 4. Did you say it was minus 1 over 4? Yeah. That's the completed square. What's the smallest this can be? And don't screw it up like yeah. last time. Minus 1 over 4? Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. So the smallest this can yeah. be is minus 1 over 4. See, we're yeah. learning. Yeah, because yeah. that number is the smallest we can get. So just take yeah. that number. Yeah, yeah. So the range, <laughs> the range is um, all numbers from minus four, minus one over four to infinity is the range. So you can see that this means it is not on two. Oh, we have the big chart for the kids there. Long <laughs> chart, yeah. Too long. Too long. Okay. So before I go on, let's draw a very quick graph of what we have. So our graph looks like this. Um, you know those two values we used at the start? Okay. Minus 1 and minus 2, they're the roots. Yep. Uh, so you have minus 1, uh, uh, minus 1, I'll space it a bit more, minus 1, minus 2. Where was our turning point? You found it, KJ. It was... Um, Minus 1.5. Yeah, so this here is minus 1 over 4, and this number here is minus 1.5. And these are the roots. So the graph looks like this. Yeah. Now, it's not 1 to 1. If you look, look up, look, look. Mm -hmm. It is many to 1. It's not 1 to 1, it's many to 1. So, for example, f of minus 2 and f of minus 1, what's the answer? 0. And then if you put this number into the calculator and you get an answer, and you put this number into the calculator, you'll get the same answer. So, for this, it's not 1 to 1. You can get the same answer twice. So, the next question is, could you find a domain that makes it 1 to 1? In other words, can you restrict what values of x to use so that the function is now one to one. Let me give you an example. X squared is not one to one. Why not? Yeah, so give me an example. Minus one becomes one and one becomes one. So it's not one to one. But if I said only use positive numbers What's x? What's my? Uh, what's one squared? One. Two squared? Four. What's the square root of one and four? One and two. And you know that must be the answer because the domain is only positive numbers. The function is only being used on the positive numbers, so you know that when you square root it, the positive number uh, is the correct answer. So that's what I mean. Can we restrict the domain so that the function is now one to one? that we don't have any uncertainty about what was the original x. What do you think? Okay, if uh, this is uh, the, uh, this would be what is more than minus one for the time. Correct, that's one way. So what you could do is, imagine I told you you could only use values of x from minus 1.5 to uh, minus infinity. Yeah. Now the function is 1 to 1 because when I draw my horizontal line, this part is gone because I have to stop here. 
So it, it crosses horizontally once, and vertically, how often does it cross? Once. Again, just once. So now it is one to one. So by cutting away half of the graph, you can make it one to one. But of course, you realize there was another way to do it as well. You could have said, only use values of x which are bigger than minus 1.5. Now, again, the function has become one to one because uh, you can't use minus two. You could calculate f of minus one, what do we get? Zero. zero. Do we ever get zero again? Zero. No, because the only way to do that is to calculate f of minus two, which is now forbidden if I'm only to use these values. So the um, answer back here, uh, sorry, I'll go down here. Uh, where do I want to write it? Right there. The answer for part C is you could use a domain <laughs> like <coughs> minus 3 over 2 to infinity. Yeah? Thanks, oh. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying here? That by choosing the right domain, you can make it one to one. And by choosing the right codomain, you can make it onto. What should be the codomain here? Well, you want the codomain to be the same as the range. So we should make the codomain equal to the range. So what was the range? Um, minus 4 to infinity. So now we have... Like this. Yeah. Yeah. So now this function f, which goes from a domain of minus 3 over 2 to infinity and a codomain of minus 1 over 4 infinity and the function is defined as x goes to, what was it, x squared uh, plus 3x plus 2. This function is now 1 to 1 and onto. So the last question here for this is to find the inverse function. So I want you to do that for me. Get the inverse of this function. It now is invertible. It now has an inverse because it is both one to one and onto. Oh, by the way, notice how there's multiple answers here because I could have thrown away a different part of the graph. Get an inverse? Impossible. Yeah. No, no, I thought, no, I really thought someone could get it. Like, there is an inverse. But it will be something. Something, 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 something. Okay. No, I thought it will be something, actually. Let me see the book. I'll make sure I've covered everything in here. Oh, yes. No, let's have a look at it. Okay. No, 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 no. You had your chance. You failed. Oh. I'm done. What's the answer? Uh, you know. <laughs> X minus one. Yeah. Oh, wow. No. Yeah, That's X minus one. Just give me one minute. Yeah, because one you know that X minus two would be... No, no, no. Stop it right there. No, I'm doing it. Right. So, we'll use the method I showed you today. Why y equals x 
squared plus 3x plus 2. Yes? What do we do next, do you think? No? 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 Complete the square. <laughs> Dude, complete the square. Uh, complete the square. Oh, okay. Yeah? So that's x plus 3 over 2 squared minus a quarter. That's y plus a quarter equals x plus 3 over 2 squared. See where I'm going with this? Yeah. Square root both sides. We are using the positive right side, so I don't need to worry about the negative. So you get here minus 3 over 2 plus root y plus 1 over 4. What does that equal? x. Oh, okay. You bet it. So the square root gets given as what? Square root on both sides. Oh, this side, the, yeah, the yeah, there was a square root here that cancelled this and the square root here. Uh, so f inverse x equals minus 3 over 2 plus root x plus a quarter. That is now the inverse function. So the last thing, I think was some other thing just to show you. Oh, yeah. Doing some maths in here. Right, there's, there's two things left to show you here. So, can I continue, please? Yeah. yeah. No, sh sh no, no. Look at the time. I want to get this finished now. So, focus here. F. Um, one feature of inverse functions is that if you compose the function with the inverse of the function, yes. you always get a cancellation and you're left with x. Let me give you a, let, yeah, let me give you an, a quick example on the side here. Uh, if f of x equals ex, what's the inverse here? Log x. So if you calculate f, f inverse of x, that's f of f inverse, which is log x. And then f is e log x. And what happens here? X. Cancel. Yeah. So look, uh, all I'm saying is sometimes in the exam, they might ask you to check this cancellation happens. No, there's not the time. But I want you to know that this is a result which should always be true. If this is not true, it means your inverse is wrong. And the last thing to do is to graph the inverse function. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a quick trick I want to show you to graph in it. Okay. So the can I go down? Yes. The the trick is if you have the inverse function, like let me try and draw it a bit. To, it was a bit to the left, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now actually, I don't include the, the yeah, I don't include the whole thing, but I'm just drawing it. I was just doing the piece on the right. Doesn't matter right now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's very difficult to imagine this. Uh, I think I had a video up on YouTube. Well, what you do is you draw a 45 degree line through the origin, and as best you can, you imagine that this graph is on glass and flip it around the 45 lines. No, no, no. Just do what I say. This is an idea time, listening time. So you draw a 45 degree line and you flip the graph around this line. So if we can use our best imagination. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, I can do this. Well, look, this is why I got the graph program. So <laughs> what was the function? x squared plus 3x, 3x plus, two. plus 2. So I'll graph this. Okay, and then what was my inverse function? So Wait a second. Three minus 3 over 2. Minus 3 over 2. Yeah. Square root of plus square root of, root of, root of x yeah. plus, plus 1 over 4. Like this? Yes. Like this? Yes. All right, let's graph it. 
Now hang on, I'll put in the minus one as well. Oh, sorry, my graph, yeah. So can you imagine there's a 45 degree line going along here? Yeah, it's flipped around it. No, I did. No, he said. <laughs> he never said you? mirror. <laughs> I said flipped around. <laughs> yeah, flipped around the 45 degree line. That's that's oh goodness. Imagine there's a line going along here. Yeah. We flip it around this line. Oh, okay. Now, we'll tell them we, yes, imagination is difficult. Uh, we will do many of these in the tutorial, I think, next week. I think will be good practice, okay? So, uh, uh, yes, but we need to get out of here. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, figure it out. Just, you know yourself. Pick, pick some questions no, around no, 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 no. practice. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Here, the crap. <laughs>